Mystery quilt number five, starting clue number three. I've taken some time off between doing some shows and ho Christmas holidays. Uh, I did a show at the Christmas uh, at the Colonnade, and then I did another show for the Epilepsy Foundation Chocolate Fling. Lots of fun. A little benefit for all the vendors. We got to wander around and sample some of the uh, foods from the Chocolatiers. Don't think I can do that again, though. Uh, very rich, very delicious, way too delicious. Um, and even though I, my family never gets sick, my kids, they're so healthy. We had something run through the house. Kid would get it, then mommy would get it, then another kid would get it, then mommy would get it. Uh, which resulted in a, a, a small flare from my senior gravis. Uh, lots of activities with church. But this is what makes the quilt alongs so much fun you can back away from them. Do them at your own pace. Uh, all you have to do is just, as the clues were coming out, I was downloading them, so now I've got my tables cleaned up and I'm ready to do it. All I had to do is print out my instructions and find my little box that had my pieces, and I'm ready to pick back up where I left off. So, we did clues one and two, and now we're going to do clue number three. Looking at our sheet for mystery clue, mystery five, clue three, and it had us doing some cutting out in preparation for clue number four, and we did that. So I've got my pieces from clue number two all ready to go. I have my four patches from clue number one ready to go. And then for the cutting, we had to cut some ten and a half by ten and a half inch squares and then cut them in half to make some triangles. And we're going to set those aside till the next time. We did the same thing with some fifteen and a half inch squares and we made some triangles. So like there's this fifteen and a half inch strips, cut squares, make triangles, ten and a half inch, cut squares, make triangles. Our next step, we need four and a half by ten and a half inch rectangles. So there we are. So four and a half by ten and a half inch rectangles. And if we look at the clue, it tells us to take one of the light black four patches and connect it with the light rectangles that we had just cut. So, there we go. So let's get started. So I'm coming over to my machine. Again, I like to do the piecing stitch because it gives me such a nice quarter inch seam and that is the biggest thing Whatever seam you use for one, you've got to use for the other. And if we measure from the edge of our foot, if we measure from the edge of our foot to the needle, okay, we've got a quarter of half a quarter of an inch seam. So that is perfect. Okay, so we're going to take one of our light four patches. I am a pinner. I pin so that things don't move around. And that helps out. Alright. So I am going to drop my presser foot down. Just to be right on the inside of that fabric to give me my nice quarter inch seam. And I'm just going to stitch along. Just sort of guiding that through a little bit. Take my pin back out. Oh, 
going it along nice along the edge. Do a little bit more there. And I can do another one. Just keep it on moving. And you will do this until you have all of your four patches sewn onto a white rectangle. So there's my first step. We're going to sew all of the four patches onto our rectangles and then we'll go on to the next section. Okay, and our instructions say once we have these sewn down, we want to press towards the light. So we're going to set our seam, pressing down, watch your fingers, it's still a little warm there, and I usually finger press it first. And I have to brag about my husband. I told you I'd messed up on cutting these uh, rectangles. And I realized I'd used up every bit of this particular fabric. I was so discouraged. I mentioned it to my husband that I had, through all my carefulness, I cut my rectangles four inches by ten and a half inches. And there was no salvaging. So those are now in my scrap pile to, to use for something else. He took me out to Joann's. It was late enough in the afternoon. I did not want to go out to the Joann's, which is by the mall. And uh, he ran into Walmart and bought some milk. And I ran into Joann's and I picked up the last yard and a half they had of this fabric. Talk about fortuitous. Alright, so we're, once you get all these pressed down, we need to look at our sheet and see what's next. So we have got all of this step completed, pressed to the light. Now it tells us that we should take some more of our four and a half by ten and a half inch rectangles and connect them up to the piece that we did in step two. So we are going to take it and we're going to sew it down here and we're going to do that to all of our squares. So one step at a time. All right, let's get sewing. Right, and after you've gotten your four and a half by ten and a half, half inch rectangle sewn onto our log cabin, we're going to press follow the instructions and press to the light. Set our seam. Now, we're going to be ready Now, we're going to be ready to add on the piece that we just did. We want to make sure by pressing to the light, we can just nest that up beautifully. It'll butt up. And using your fingers, you can feel, again, a, qu a quarter inch seam, and we're going to sew that together like that, having the blue just coming up meeting along. Remember, any if you use a quarter inch seam for the first step, you need to use them for the next all the next steps. Use the same seam allowance throughout your project. And after this, then we will square up 
and trim off any overhang so they're all nice and square and then we'll see what's on the next clue back to the sewing machine all right picking up where we left off we've got our four and a half by ten and a half rectangle attached to our four patch we have our four and a half by ten and a half rectangle attached to our modified log cabin the next step that we want to do is attach these pieces to each other So using our pins okay, we've got our fold going that way and then our fold going this way so that is going to give us a nice very nice matchup of our seams And then we're just going to pin that down and sew it and then we will square up our square and I had to relearn on another project how important squaring up can be so making sure I haven't moved that any and I did so let's try that again I wish y'all could feel this because when it's off it's got like a little extra bump but when it's nestled in there nice it's just very smooth so we're just going to pin that I like to pin it on each side And this tells us we're going to be squared up to 14 and a half by 14 and a half. So let's kind of see where we're at on that. So stopping at our four patch, starting there. And it is right at 14 and a half <clears throat> over here. So we are going to have that nicely done. And then all we're going to do, then all we're going to do is bring that over to our sewing machine. We're going to make sure we've got it at the right stitch. Remember to always use the same measurement for your seams keep all your box consistent and then we're just gonna sew that down And we're going to check it. And there is our last step, or next to last step, our last bit of sewing for clue number three. And that's what it's going to look like. And then what we're going to want to do is square it up. So we can take our ruler, we're going to want it to be 14 and a half, so you'll measure it along, and I always like to go along one of the seams, 
to make sure I'm getting things nice and even. Use your rotary cutter and just use this. Uh, I don't have a 14 and a half inch square. It doesn't mean I'm not going to go out and go buy one. Because that would make things a little handy, wouldn't it? And sometimes, though, you've just got to kind of deal. Make do. When we press this out and pull that, that's going to stretch that a little bit. So we're going to press that. We're going to square up our sides so that we're not uh, going to have a bunch of uneven things. And then we'll be good to go. Alright, and there is the finished product of the Quilt Along Facebook group. Mystery Quilt 5, clue number 3. So we're going to finish up all of our squares, all of our modified log cabins, and all of our strips. Get all those put together. We'll square them up, make sure everything's nice and even. And then we'll get started on clue number 4. So if you like this, want to see more videos like this, or you want to be notified when the next video comes out, please be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, give me some comments. Uh, for the most part, I'm self-taught, and I love hearing new procedures, new methods, things that can make it easier or more accurate. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.